time. Mac Rhodes, Baylor Director of Athletics, joins us now on the show. With the uh, story earlier this week, and Mac, thank you for your time, the, the loose ends that had not been teased that were crossed or eyes that were dotted on a Big Ten massive contract. The Big 12 had the extension that Brett Yormark and company pulled off. I just want to add, that was signed, right? That There's no T's and I's that have not been crossed or dotted. You know, they're, they're still like um, like the Big Ten, still working through some of the, the long-form stuff. But it's it's um, extremely, extremely close. And um, we, we've been tracking really, really well. I think, you know, um, the communication uh, with, with the athletic directors, um, especially the athletic directors has been, has been really, really, uh, good. And so we're all aware of, uh, of, uh, you know, some of the remaining eyes that need to be dotted T's that need to be crossed, but, um, it is, it is very close and that's, that's not unusual. You know, those, those take a long time to go through. Um, there are, you know, uh, outside counsel that are expertise in, uh, in these, in these areas. And so, you know, getting through the, the MOU piece, um, you know, was, was done fairly rapidly, but, but once you get to the long form, there's a lot to that. Um, there is so much detail. And, um, and again, just on, on behalf of big 12, we're, we're, you know, tracking, uh, extremely positive. Mac, do you, I mean, can you compare what it was like when you first started working in athletic departments where you might have two games on TV a year that were, that everybody was excited about. And I'm sure it was, Hey, we're on TV this week. Let's make sure everything is good, good, good to now where you have to be intimately involved and knowledgeable about the specifics of the media deal. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a completely different world. And, you know, I go back to my time, you know, at, at UTEP, um, when I was the, the number two person in the department and, um, you know, you just, you had a handful of games on and, you know, we were working with, uh, with the local affiliates that televised, you know, away football games and, um, and, you know, even some, uh, and, and some away, you know, basketball games and, you know, the debate over whether or not you, you televise, you know, anything at, at home because you didn't want to, that to, to hurt your gate. You know, you wanted people to buy tickets and be there in person rather than just stay home and watch it on TV. And so there's been such a, a transformation, you know, in terms of television, um, and, and intercollegiate athletics and, uh, particularly again, you know, football, men's basketball, women's basketball. And, uh, and all of the, the details behind it, all of the particulars, the access, um, the, the, the starting times, the, the different windows, um, all of that. So uh, it, it, is, uh, it, it really is a lot to digest, and it's, a, and it's obviously a lot to navigate. Mac, this is, 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 you know, this is not a question that you can really answer with facts. It's a bit of a hypothetical, but you guys decided to – you know, come to the TV agreement early. And as we know, all the things that have played out these last few months has put you in, in kind of an unfamiliar but fun place to be as far as in a, in a position of strength as opposed to being kind of the hunted constantly. Um, what other factors or what other things came into play you feel like that that TV deal helped encourage? And do you feel like, or where do you think the conference would be had you guys not taken that move? Or were there perhaps other moves that you guys made that led you to where you are right now in your mind? Yeah, I mean, you know, quite frankly, I think the the first move um, that that really you know helped and uh, you know provide some some momentum, uh, some positivity for for the renegotiation, right? Going early, I think, was the solidification of the con uh, of the conference and, and membership. And uh, you know, I I think back to to when you know the announcement Oklahoma and Texas leaving you know, during the summer and, uh, you know, we were going into a football season. And, and one of the things that was really, really prevalent for, for us was we didn't want an entire football season, you know, to, to, or to go through an entire football season. And everybody's talking about, we, we only have eight members, 
and uh, what's the future of the of the Big 12? And now it's really vulnerable, susceptible. And so, you know, Bob Bowlesby and, and certainly the conference office and, and our presidents and, and all of the athletic directors, you know, did a great job of, you know, adding four teams. And, and so we were able to, to, to change that, that narrative, uh, before the, the college football season even, even started. So Craig, I think that was, you know, um, one, one component, one piece that was, was really, really significant. I think the, the, the second piece was certainly the hiring of, of Brett Yormark and his energy and, and, and being aggressive and bringing in the right people. Um, and so, for example, bringing in Endeavor mm-hmm. uh, as our as our TV media consultant that you know had great relationships with with both of our TV partners, Fox, ESPN. Uh, and so, I think the timing of it, I think you know our willingness to say, hey, we're going to take some risk here. Uh, we might we might sacrifice some some monies by by not letting this thing you know, trickle out and go to the open market, uh, by, by, you know, negotiating a deal right now where we don't have to, but, but, you know, what's, what's most important. And I think, you know, certainly money was important, but, but even more important than that was, was stability. And, um, you know, I'd love to tell you that, Hey, we all forecasted where the, where the economy was, was headed. Um, you know, maybe a little bit, but not certainly, you know, like, like, um, like it's, it's transpired to be so you know there was probably a a little bit of luck but i think you know most of it is we we made our own luck and and um again i think you know bob bowlsby has a part in that brett yormark has a huge part in it um in terms of the relationships and in hiring endeavor and and having some really really um fundamental you know critical conversations with our tv partners and casting a vision for them what what we can become so that's a that's a long answer but you know i think all of those things played in i remember the day that he was announced i believe it might have been the same day that we had you on the show and you didn't know much about him now you guys are involved in a lot of the uh, meetings uh i i think at times even maybe a, uh, a joint at the hip when it comes to making decisions along with others the ad's and presidents and others in the big 12 what's he like when he is told his idea may not be a good one. Is, is that? Have you seen that happen? Yeah, I, I, I have, and you know, um, you know, myself, and you know, I'm certainly not the the only person, but you know, I've, I've certainly have, you know, um, I don't know, maybe challenge is the is too strong of a word, but certainly, you know, I've, I've been direct and and candid when when i've disagreed and and um and and so of others and i think you know one is he allows for that opportunity and uh and not everybody does that and uh and then i think you know maybe um he's he's got a lot of great qualities but i think one of one of you know his his best qualities is you know he's and i think i've mentioned this before but you know he doesn't pretend to know what he doesn't know um he will defer to to others um, when you know they they know more in, uh, than than he does in that in that space. And then you know I think finally you know um, he's a he's a quick learner, right? Um, and I say that in a really positive way. College athletics is not a space that you know he'd ever worked in, and there's some nuances to it. There's there's great differences between professional and and, and intercollegiate. And, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's absorbed a lot. He's, he's learned a lot. And, uh, and so, you know, again, I think it goes back to Craig, what you said, our, our conference, look, um, you can, you can never be rest. You, you, you can never rest. Um, you know, you can never be, you know, 100% assured, but our, our conference is in a, a much different place and you even hear the national media talk about it now that you know we were once the vulnerable and and right now we're we're in a pretty good place and we just need to make sure that we protect that place we even we even strengthen it in the future and uh and i think you know um we're we're moving in that in that direction to do so there is no question that there have been schools that the big 12 has at least had some discussion with 
about the possibility of joining the conference. It just all depends on what story is actually the, the true details. We've spoken with you about it. What's the difference in talking with somebody, whoever it might be, about, hey, this is who we are, this is why we are a great place to be, and yet not making it sound like you need them, it, that they are the ones who would win if they joined the Big 12? Yeah, um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. And I think, you know, first and foremost, if, if we're ever having any, any of those types of conversations, you know, we're certainly talking about about the strengths of the of the of the Big Twelve, and and uh, and casting vision. You know where we are today, where we think we're going to be be tomorrow. Here's why. All of those things. Never, never do we speak to, um, you know, the 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 the, the place that that they're in. Um, you know, at at the moment, it's it's all about you know Big Twelve and 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 where we're where we're headed. And, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the, the conversations, you know, quite frankly, you know, need to be genuine. And, um, hey, I, I think, you know, in, in all of these situations, I, I would probably, you know, maybe describe, hey, it's a, it's a win-win for both. Um, you, you know, if, if we're talking and having those types of conversations, hey, it's not just that you need the, the, the big 12. Um, we think the big 12, um, could be a really good place for you. If, if, um, uh, if it, if it turns out that the place that you're in doesn't, doesn't work out. And, and we, we think, you know, we would benefit by, by you, um, particular, you know, institution by, by joining the, 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 the conference. And so I, I think that's the way those conversations go, that it's genuine and it's a, it's a win-win for, for both, uh, for both sides. Mac, you know, part of your job is always to project out what three years from now, a couple years from now, you're going to have to be budget wise and all that. How is there a new layer to that in knowing that you have to push some donations towards NIL and, uh, and find new money that way, as opposed to it's it's probably easier to walk in front of somebody and say this is a building we're going to build, as opposed to this is how much money we need to stay competitive with the people in the conference who are also doing this thing, because that seems a lot more in the abstract. Yeah, Paul. I've, it you know again, great question, and and uh, there's certainly more pieces to the puzzle. Than there, than there ever have been before when you're, you're trying to navigate, you know, all of this and, and think about, you know, future and, you know, um, what do we need for capital? How important is capital, meaning new, new facilities or renovation of facilities? Um, you know, just our, our operating budget and some of the deregulation that, that's going on, you know, and you, you think about travels not getting any less expensive and particularly now with four new members and and then you know you you talked about the the name image and likeness space and so you know there's there's some science to it but it's probably a little bit more art than than science when you when you think about all of it and uh you think about you know name image and likeness uh, it is it is necessary you know we we have to be in the game you've heard me me talk about that you've heard me talk about that you know we're not we're not trying to to match dollar for dollar with uh, with some of the the other institutions within the, the state of Texas. I don't I don't know that we can, and that's not a defeatist attitude. That's just who we are as an institution, and the number of alums that we have, and in, in our donor base, and you know some of the other things that that we have going on. And so, um, how do we how do we be in the game? How do we we stay in the game? How much of that, Paul? Um, you know, and this is really the art, how much of it can really truly be new money versus how much of it is money that's redirected from one bucket into like, for example, the, the name, image and likeness bucket. So when we talk about cannibalization, is that 50%? Is it, you know, that, that we're going to, you know, um, have to, have to cut into, you know, this, this total amount of, of dollars that, um, that uh, that we need annually for for name image likeness and i think the other piece of it is you know how long are we operating 
in this current environment. Um, you know, does federal legislation change it? Um, does does the NCA do something different in the future to, to, to help change it? Uh, I think we would all agree if you were talking to everybody, you know, throughout the country, I would I would guess that that nine out of 10 of us would say this isn't sustainable. So, you know, how long does this again, current state last? You know, I know I know right now, you know, that that Baylor athletics, we, we believe when we think about, you know, just football, women's basketball, men's basketball, you know, we we probably have to, to have you know, name, image, and likeness opportunity dollars um, in the in the range of, of uh, you know five million annually. And uh, you know, again, I think that's where we're at for the next next two years. But you know, what does that look like years three, four, five, six? Name, image, and likeness is not going away, um, nor should it. Nor should it. I think the way we do it needs to needs to change. Um, change holistically and uh, and I do think it will here in a here in a couple of years. Mac last question I have and we appreciate it. Does the NIL and all of that comes with it and like you said you're trying to figure out what you need to sustain what you know Dave Aranda approached this yesterday during his presser but does NIL change your expectations of what anything Baylor Athletics should be able to accomplish on a national level? Yeah, right. Um, I, I really do appreciate that question. Um, fair or unfair, right, wrong, or indifferent, no. Um, I just think it, it, it can't be an excuse for us. Um, we've got to fight, scratch, claw, overcome, be, be strategic. Um, again, we, we have a budget half the size of, of, of some others. And uh, we've we've held our own, if if not more, um, you know, name, image, or likeness, right? Um, again, compared to some some other institutions, uh, specifically within the state of Texas, uh, we're we're at a disadvantage because of our our size, et cetera. But it it can't be an excuse. We've we've got to fight and 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 overcome. And so my expectations are that from a from a, an athletic success standpoint that, that we not drop. And, uh, and our coaches, I think would, would tell you the, the same thing. They, they feel the, the, the same way. Now, what, what I truly and, and really, really believe when we talk about dollar to dollar, I, I don't, I don't think we need to be there. There, there is a value to Baylor that you cannot put a dollar on our, our Christian mission, our values, our culture, uh, the way our, our coaches uh, run and operate their their programs. Um, again, we're not for everybody, but um, there is a true value there, and and we can never ever lose lose sight of that. And um, and that's why you know we're going to be really really uh, careful about about who comes into our program, who becomes part of our our family, but. Um, you know, there there is a, a, a value there that, um, you know, a, a value there that I, I think our, our coaches absolutely uh, believe in. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate your access as always. Appreciate your time. Have a great holiday weekend. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor, with us on 365 Sports. And, and I've, 